Hey guys, Wild Tracker here. How are you doing? Welcome to this very, very special uh, episode here. And today we are looking at the differences between the uh, old version of Minecraft, 1.7, whichever version you're on, to 1.8, um, which they're basically calling the Bountiful Update. And the launch date for this, as you can see, is Sep Sep September 2nd, 2014. So, not long to go. We are currently in the 1.8 pre-release one which uh, basically means all the snapshots are done with they're just doing minor bug fixes and in a week or so time they will be launching the full version of 1.8 so uh, woohoo a long time coming i can tell you it's been over 300 days of development in terms of getting this update ready from uh, Mojang so uh, the guys have been working really hard and what I wanted to do is basically have a look at some of the blocks and new features within the game I'm not going to be going through everything because there is a whole load of stuff um, particularly there's a load of stuff to do with servers to do with world borders to do with the multi-threading and you know the, the chunk side loading on your side of it so, you know on the client side there's a whole host of features, so you can go and check all that stuff out um, actually over at their wiki. But I thought what would be really cool, because it's uh, I kind of got confused myself in terms of what has changed, because I've been playing on the snapshots for absolutely ages. Um, and so when I actually looked back, I thought, wow, is that, that really in the snapshots and not in the, in the last version? So, um, yeah. I thought what would be really cool would be to go through all the various different things uh, uh, that we can and fit in. Um, a is a refresher for those that uh, have been playing the snapshots for ages, but if you didn't go to the snapshots and you just want to know what's new in this, then here's your chance. So uh, yeah, without further ado, let's get going through. So first of all, these things aren't new. Um, they've always been in the game, however they are now craftable. In other words, you can use um, cobble and stone brick and add vines to them and make them into the mossy stone and also we can craft the chisel stone brick now as well. Um, so that's really good. They're, they're new features. Some, well, some people don't like it, some people do like it. Mm, I'm a fan. I'm a fan. Um, I think, you know, to use a block like this is really good now. Um, I think that's, uh, yeah. You can put it into the bills, and I think the fact that it was a rare find, there wasn't enough of it um, to quanti you know, sort of qualify as a, it was just too rare. You couldn't really use it that much. Um, new blocks, so we've got the the granite, and obviously the polished granite. Um, <clears throat> probably my, I don't know, not my favourite one. Um, I can see some uses for it in certain situations, but it's not my favourite. Same with the diorite, um, not my favourite one. It's um, I don't know, it's still too bitty. I, you know, if I'm going to use white, I probably will use um, things like the uh, the quartz or snow or something like that. I, I just, the, the smooth one's still a bit too bitty for me. Um, but nonetheless, but my favourite of the three of these new blocks, andesite. I do like this one. I think the polished andesite looks really, really good. So that's um, that's nice. And also the other andesite is quite good because it's a kind of um, cross between a a sort of cobble. A smooth cobble almost, which is quite nice in paths and not, not quite the same as gravel. So it's a kind of in-between one, so it can be used those quite well. So, moving on, slime blocks. Yay, slime blocks. And you see, we've got our slime block. Woohoo, they're bouncy. Way. Um, these came out so long ago, didn't they? Uh, within the snapshot. Very early on in the snapshots. Cool, cool slime blocks. We like slime blocks. Um, so we can build with slime blocks now. We can bounce on slime blocks, which means they have 101 uses for stopping you from falling and helping you get up somewhere. But then, then, they made them sticky. They made them sticky, which uh, I, I think there was, um, I remember watching a video that uh, Doc M did on that and how they all uh, started uh, coming up with ideas. If these were sticky, what could you do with them? And then a whole host of things came out. So, yeah, you can uh, shoot things out, shoot things back. That could be um, redstone. It could be anything. Um, yeah, so most things stick to this. There's a few things that don't, but that means there's lots of cool things. So go and check YouTube. You will see 101 inventions for sticky slime blocks. Now, not so long back, we got the new sea, sea temples introduced, which introduced uh, a new temple, 
Um, and you can go and find some gold blocks down there. But then it also introduced these new stones, which are really, really cool. I like these. I haven't used them myself in um, my Let's Play world because, um, well, on the last map, I never got a chance to actually get to go to the... Uh, uh, the thing and we've only just found one in the new map so um, yeah looking forward to coming up with some builds on these uh, that's really cool uh, and then likewise we have the sponge but with the sponge comes the wet sponge you can see that sponge is actually the, the effects are really cool aren't they it is dripping with water which is really really cool so sponges basically have the property that you can absorb water and they become a wet sponge Okay, so that's that's really cool. And then wet sponges, you can basically take the wet sponge, put them in a furnace, and they become a dry sponge. So that's really really cool as well. So uh, again, um, when you go raiding the sea temples and you find the sponge room, there's going to be a load of these, and the fact they're reusable as well is really cool. Um, it's really going to help uh, absorb water if you want to, rather than going around placing torches or trying to do things out with um, with dirt and, and that sort of thing. Uh, and then of course with them came the sea lanterns. These are the coolest lights going. They are so nice. Um, they kind of just disappear. Unlike redstone lanterns which are very obvious, if you've got a build that's using sort of the, the white, they do mix in with it very well. And as you can see from here, we're at night and they let off a lot of um, light so they're, they're as bright as the uh, redstone lantern and that sort of thing so uh, that's really cool <clears throat> okay so move moving on uh, and maybe we'll just set the um, daylight on a moment okay that's a bit better we can actually see what we're doing so yeah this is a very new feature now um, in the latest snapshot this this came up uh, fairly recently and that is the redstone so exactly the same as sandstone but red, um, which is great because you get the normal red sandstone, you can get then get the chiseled and the smooth, and, oh, hello horsey, uh, you can get the, uh, yeah, the chiseled and the smooth, but then you can also craft it into uh, steps or stairs, which is really cool, so the behavior is exactly the same as all the other features, and obviously you get the slabs as well, so, uh, yeah, really, really cool block, and again, you know, it just adds more more color, more sort of feature into buildings, which I'm always a fan of. I think in in Minecraft, if we can add some new new blocks, new features, we can build better stuff. Uh, okay, moving on to coarse dirt. I do like the coarse dirt. I didn't think I would when I heard about it, and I thought to myself, coarse dirt, really? But then I started using it, and um, you can see here there's a very very slight difference so this is a coarse dirt on the left that's normal dirt on the right so it looks very very similar just a little bit dark almost as if it's got some moisture in there and not dried out so that's that's the difference between the two but as you can see here coarse dirt does not grow grass on it so you don't actually get the grass on the coarse dirt making coarse dirt is really really easy because it's just two gravel and two dirt um, opposite each other and that basically makes um, for coarse dirt. So again, you don't lose anything. Um, really easy to make. We've finally got a good use for gravel. Um, and uh, you can plant things on it. So uh, good for borders. You know, if you're going to have a border around the, the head outside the house, you know, it was always missing that element. Um, people would come up with different ideas. For example, you know, they might um, till it with a hoe or something like that and make it look sort of that god damn weather yeah so um they would um you know they would do that they would actually um do all that side of it i'm just gonna turn this thunderstorm off now it's not my day hooray the thunder stopped so uh yes can we get on please um where I like using coarse dirt myself is in the paths, and we can use a variety of stuff now in the paths, which will make some really sort of nice paths if you watch my uh, series on the um on Wildcraft, you'll see I've used this path uh, recently. So we've got the coarse dirt, you've got the gravel, we've got cobblestone, and we've got andesite in here, which is really cool. So you can make some really, really nice, uh, especially winding paths and that sort of thing as well. So I do like the coarse dirt. I think that's a, a really nice feature to add into it. So, um, yeah, that's blocks. Let's have a look at some of the mobs now. Um, now, to do this, I'm going to have to set my... Um, back to normal mode I turn this off because I really did hate the fact that um, 
we uh, there's just slimes everywhere. So first of all, the endermite. This is the endermite, and basically um, these little fellas. I don't know how much damage they really do. They do a little bit of a kick, but they're not really a, a major, more of a pain. You just don't expect them. And you get normally, occasionally, if you actually flow an ender pearl, you might occasionally get an endermite spawning. And down at the end as well, with, um, with all the endermen, you get the endermites, which does make um, ender farms a little bit more interesting. And uh, a lot of people had to update all the ender farms because of that. Um, and then the new mob, which is to do with the sea temples. That's these guys here, which is basically the guardians. So um, these are the little guardians, uh, but you do get the large guardian as well. Now guardians, unlike endermites, don't drop anything. Guardians do. Um, they actually drop these prisoning crystals, which you can use for the lights, and they drop fish as well. So if you want to do a fish farm, you can do that. Um, they also, we have a new enchantment with it, Depth Strider three or one or two so basically now we we can have depth strider to our boots it means we can run in water um, just as quick in fact if not a little bit quicker we can on land when we're running it's almost like a speed boost hello so um, yeah I think there are some really cool features um, that's a that's a nice introduction to a complete temple mob new drops new blocks a whole new uh, a whole new element to the game and also a new element in gameplay as well because we're all used to uh, attacking these dungeons when they're underground but underwater just just makes it different again so uh, that's really cool so uh, yeah so let's just um, get rid of these slime blocks again because we don't want those and goodbye to our mobs sorry guys <clears throat> we love you really hey chick how you doing you okay you just watching right uh, moving on the other new uh, mob the rabbit! Yay! Little bunny wunnies! Uh, I do believe as well, initially they made these so they could be like pets and you could keep them like the dogs and, and that side of it. I think that element's been taken away now because uh, they're just too cute, aren't they? You have them as pets? You have them as pets? Do you know what that means? You can't have the drops. So uh, with this, there's a host of new drops that came with it. So you can see we've got raw rabbit, which can then be cooked and can be eaten. Um, but if you combine that with potatoes and carrots and um, I think mushrooms, um, you can actually make a rabbit stew. So and that is really good. That is five hunger bars, and your saturation is really good as well. So it's actually uh, as a food source goes, it doesn't stack, but it is really good. Um, we also get rabbit hide from them, and four rabbit hides together. If we look in here, four rabbit hide will give us one leather, so that's really good. We also get the rabbit's foot, and this is quite a rare drop, but you do get a rabbit's foot. And from a rabbit's foot, we can use that for brewing, and we get a potion of leaping. And in potion leaping, um, you've basically got the normal jump boost for three minutes it basically gives you two block jump rather than one block um a bit like the jump boost you get on the beacons or if it's a splash potion it's two minutes 15 or we can have jump boost two so you can extend it which um is is much better but it doesn't last as long so um yeah that's really cool so lots of new features with the rabbits uh the other thing to mention on mobs is actually sheep now drop mutton so uh, you get raw mutton and you get cooked mutton so yeah if you have a burning arrow or a, a burning sword you'll get cooked mutton or you can just cook it in the oven and again that's quite nutritious as well so um that's quite good to have so really cool so that's the the, the mob stuff now let's have a look at one of my favorite things the villagers my look at these villagers there are so many new villagers. I think we had about five types before. So these look the same. They've got the librarian. Um, and the, I haven't traded with these guys. Um, love, I, what I love about the librarian is the books. You get so many different goods books. Really easy trading with paper. You can just grow a, a sugarcane farm and then get lots of paper, do lots of trading. Um, but each one has three books. So we've got this one in the first uh, one, and then later on there's two more books uh, once you've traded with them. And you get some really cool ones. If you watch my SMP server, you'll see on there I've got a, a villager uh, area set up, and I've, I've now got seven librarians. So we've got things like Unbreaking 3 books, Silk Touch book, 
we've got um, fire aspect book we've got um, fortune books all those kind of goodies that you really really want um, so the villagers are I, I think they're just such a cool feature now we still got um, the cleric well, he wasn't called the cleric before was he but he was a priest we still got the cleric and thankfully although not trade with him the bottle of enchanting is back but again all your rotten flesh um, nice easy way of getting emeralds uh, and again, he does have some nice features for early gameplay. So we've been able to get some Eyes of Ender um, before we actually went down to the into the Nether and make Ender chests. You can find the Eyes to make the portal easily enough and get things like that. So, uh, so they're two really good ones. And then we've got the um, you essentially got three types. You've got the normal brown robed villager, you've got the white robed villager, and then you've got the black robed villager. But each of these are now split up into different categories. So, for example, this white robe one is level worker. And he basically will make different um, lever items. But again, if you've got a really good cow farm and you've got lots of lever left over, then an easy way to get emeralds. Uh, the other white one is the butcher. So again, you can trade lots of meats and things like that with them and uh, get cooked food back and then there is another white robe down there we'll have a look at so this one here he's a brown robe villager so he's technically a farmer um, and he does have the same mechanics of the farming we'll look at in a minute but this one's a fisherman so again if you've got a uh, spider farm all that string um, on Guardian I was, I was just loads and loads of times with a fisherman I could do that we can also trade coal which is really easy because coal is one of those things that as you get further in the game you kind of just leave don't you you kind of oh, I've got so much coal um, but now get the coal because your coal you can trade for the emeralds um, so that's really really good and, and you know getting emeralds means that when you want your books and they're 40 emeralds each well you can afford them so um, yeah keep all your Keep all your uh, stuff and trade with them and keep your coal and, and that kind of thing. So, yeah. Um, weaponsmith. So the the, the black robe day, uh, villagers, they've all got different things. So we've got the weaponsmith, we've got an armourer and we've got a toolsmith. So this is a weaponsmith. And these are really cool because this one's making weapons. So at the moment it's just... Um, iron and make a lot of iron tools and enchanted iron tools as well uh, but more importantly they will make a diamond enchanted tool so um, for example a pickaxe now if you get a diamond pick it might only be an efficient to enchanted however for repairing your existing pick it's a really cheap way to repair it so um, yeah just getting getting those are, are really really good uh, we have the traditional farmer um, these guys I really like because these guys, well, yes, they trade wheat, um, but they trade potatoes, they trade carrots, and around between 15 to 18, I think. So you imagine 16, that's one quarter. So for one stack of potatoes, you get four emeralds. Um, now, if you imagine you've got a farm, very quick automated farm to grow wheat and potatoes or potatoes and carrots you can have unlimited supply of these pumpkins as well um, which are really easy to grow if you've got a pumpkin farm so you've got four or five things you can trade with this guy and you will have emeralds for life these guys very important um, so more so than the other farmer types um, who are very very important for some of the farming as we'll see in a minute but these guys for trading as well brilliant so you want to look after your farmers so we've got the armorer here <coughs> excuse me so the armor is basically as it sounds um, they look after the armor side of it again so you can get complete iron armor from uh, from this but you also get some diamond armor as well so like for example chest plates now chest plates again are very expensive to make so if you can get a chest plate and then use that for repairing existing chest plates well nice and easy isn't it uh, the other brown robed farmer type is the shepherd and again, this guy, you can trade wool with him, and he will give you, he's not locked at the moment, but he will give you every colour of wool going. So again, if you've got unlimited emeralds because you're trading with this guy, and you've got stacks of the things, who needs a sheep farm? You just come to the shepherd and buy the wool. It's simple. So the other black road one is this Fletcher. 
uh, it's not Fletcher, Toolsmith. And again, as it sounds, he'll be making the tool side of it, so all your shovels and that side of it. And again, he'll do diamond stuff as well. So that's really, really, really cool. And last but not least, we have the Fletcher, which again, I've kind of found good for trading with string. He will make arrows, and I think he makes enchanted bows, but it wasn't that useful other than trading some string with him, but getting a few emeralds that way. So, um, yeah, these guys are so cool they to me one of the favorite features within this update the whole villager mechanics um, and when we talk about that and let's just update the daylight again okay so this is the other mechanic that is really really good with the villagers so basically farming and breeding has changed now if I get out of here hey ho hey ho if I get a hoe and let's do this Let's see what happens. You gonna do something for me, mate? You gonna do something for me? You just gonna stand there and look pretty and make me look silly? Yeah. So, what should basically happen, we'll put that back. Is they look at that and the weather's gone again, isn't it? <coughs> These guys should come along and there you go, he's planting seeds. Darn weather. Okay, so yeah, as you can see there, he has basically started planting seeds. As soon as the, the earth is basically nice and moist there, they start planting the seeds. Um, but what they also do is they will harvest the crops. Um, and then they will have that in inventory. Uh, now, as a, as a breeding mechanic, they will start throwing bread at each other. Now, only the farmer types can do this. So this guy is a farmer. This guy isn't. This guy is a fisherman, but he's still the brown robe villager, so he can still do it. Um, and basically, this was some bread I picked up um, because they threw it at me um, but basically they will throw the bread now if they throw it over there as you can see it's not actually going over the fence but they will want to throw it to a farmer so you can actually set some automated farms up here whereby they start throwing bread over and you can get the bread or the carrots or the potatoes or whatever it happens to be we can use things like this water dispensers to wash the crops through and get all the goodies from it on a timer and there's just so many different automated fully automated farms we can now do with this which is absolutely superb um, and then there's also the breeding mechanics as well because if we if we actually have this in a village and there's enough villages within the doors we can um, set up uh, the breeders uh, and take villagers out and that sort of thing you may see we've been having some fun with the auto or infinite villager breeders I think that mechanic might have been broken now um, but uh, yeah so we've been having fun with that in the snapshots and um, yeah we can basically set these up so these guys Automatic farming, automatic breeding, um, absolutely superb. So, um, and also the trading, when we trade with villagers, it's another mechanic for making them what we call willing. Um, so in other words, that they are uh, wanting to um, breed, if you like. And that's that's a mechanic about villagers now. They've got to want to actually breed um, to actually make the new villagers. Uh, and farming is one way of them doing it us trading them another way but they won't do it here because we are not physically in a village there's no doors or anything like that that count as a village so uh, moving on yeah I do love that one spent a bit of time on it so uh, some of the newer updates we now have armor stands that's this guy here and as you can see they fit our armor um, they are movable so uh, although they're on the ground and they have gravity um, they will fall um, and so you can uh, do things like that. Water will push them, although we can't physically push them, but water will push them. They can be moved around. They count as an entity. Um, now, if you're into command blocks or into um, playing around with things in that sense, you can actually manipulate these um, using commands and that sort of thing. So you can um, get their arms to move, you can animate them, you can do there's so many things. People have been having fun playing around with these guys. Um, as almost mobs and entities so it's um, yeah really cool feature that's the armor stand there's the old door and there's the new doors oh, I love these doors oh, I do love them they are so nice and they all have different uses this door I like it's a nice sort of sturdy door um, that's okay I guess in the right environment some of these are okay and I like this one, the dark oak door, solid. So again, it's the spruce wood door is my favourite, along with the, the dark oak. 
Yeah. And, of course, fences. So the same has actually happened. So basically, whatever you make your wood type now door, that's how the door's going to look. Um, which is really, really cool. I think still, as far as villages go, it's got to be the traditional door. I don't think these count as doors in the villages. I'm not sure, but I don't think they do at the moment. So um, I've not seen anything to say it does. Uh, but likewise, we've got the oak, we've got the pine, we've got the... Um, uh, what's that light wood called? But yeah, we've, we've got them all basically, jungle and the uh, other woods. So I think that looks really good. I do like, again, I like these darker fences, um, especially with torches on them. I, you made me see, I do like those. So yeah, I think there's some, uh, it's nice that they've done that. Um, last but not least, we're going to look at banners very, very briefly. Um, I've not really played around with them, but... Um, yeah, I think there's lots of designs to come up with. I've not come up with my own design yet, but we do have banners. Um, and banners, as you can see, they're moving around as if they're in the wind. Um, they can be positioned, so just by positioning them in certain ways. And you can obviously be creative with it. So this is, I think this is basically a large white stripe, a large white stripe with a small red cross. Then a white thick white line thick white line and a thin red cross on a blue banner and that's how you basically get it so lots of creative ideas and uh, so they're really good fun and of course you can do things like this um, they added the feature basically where charged creepers if they exploded next to another mob like another creeper you would get the creeper head so that's really really cool not got one yet I keep trying every time there's a thunderstorm but nothing yet, but then you can use the heads to go on the banners, so uh, that is really, really cool. So, um, uh, and just one other thing there, I forgot to mention earlier, buttons. Buttons can now be positioned, and again, this was such an early game feature. I remember this from ooh, a couple of seasons ago on Zanecraft, right at the beginning of the year, we can now place buttons in the roof, which is so much easier than having one on the outside and then trying to walk through. You can just literally press the button and walk at the same time. So that's really, really cool. So yeah, there you go, guys. Uh, loads of features. Hope you've enjoyed that update. Um, thanks for watching. There's so much more. Go and have a look at the uh, the wiki if you really want to find out uh, all these different things that there are out there. There are just so many as you can see. I've only just touched on one side of it. When you start looking at the mechanics for servers and gameplay and you know all that kind of stuff, there is just so much out there. It's amazing. So uh, hopefully you've enjoyed it, guys. Please do click a like if you have. And don't forget to subscribe if you're not already. And we'll see you again next time. My name's Wild Trekker, and thanks for watching. Bye for now. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.